Let's move along. Fourth topic of the day. We're moving on to AEW, baby. AEW Dynamite, August 28th. It was uh, unsure whether we'd even have any AEW topics on our show coming up, going forward. But you know what? They gave us something worth talking about. John Moxley, baby. John Moxley. Look at Moxley's return with his angry face as the commentators were talking. This opened the show. That's his face. That's just the way he looks. No, That's man. His... He's got something He's got something serious on his mind, man. He's got something serious on his mind. We got to know what it is. So the commentators were like kind of tripped out, and Taz was like, hey, Shivani, maybe you should go up and, and talk to him and ask him some questions, right? So basically – Moxley called out Darby Allen. He's like, hey, Darby Allen, I need to talk to you, which I don't know where that came from. I don't remember what the, their last dealings were exactly, to be honest. But then he was going to leave. He was going to walk out, and he came back. He forgot to mention something, and he, and he pointed to Shivani. He's like, you know what? This is not your company anymore. And I assume he was pointing at Tony, meaning pointing at Tim and Tony Khan and everybody, right, that – is there going to be like a hostile takeover or something like that? But anyways, later in the show, everyone's like didn't know what he was talking about. Later in the show, after the whole Ricochet and Pack and Osprey thing, right after that, the main event, the camera cut to the back and Moxley was walking to the back, and a reporter was trying to ask him, "Hey, what, what did the, uh, you know, what did you mean by that?" And Moxley laid out a, a Bible verse. What did he say exactly? He said, "Ye shall not cast pearls to swine." Or something like that. And I, and I think what he meant by that was he didn't want to give information to, you know, to people right now. He's like, he didn't want to cast pearls. Like, the pearls are the information. Like, he just doesn't want people to know. Especially Alex Marvez, right? And then he, he goes to the crew. I guess there's crew members sitting in the back. And they're like, uh, he, sa he says, except maybe just one. So he casts us one pearl. And he says, hey, you know what would be good right now for this company? And that's when Marina Shafir – I didn't know it was Marina Shafir, but she comes out of nowhere and kicks these guys in the face. Look at this guy. I don't know what this crew member's job is, but he's really scared of her. And she gra <laughs> she grabs him and flings him into some equipment, some metal stuff. And this guy, too. This brave, this brave staff member was trying to tell her to leave. <laughs> she arm bars him, throws him on the floor. And uh, the fourth guy, I think – ran away so he was the only smart guy that he's like you know what this woman's kicking everyone's ass but for the first few seconds when she was doing this i was like who the hell is that they got some new person and here's john moxley he said that's a lesson in humility that was his final line so marina shafir and john moxley are in a stable i guess and oh marina shafir ended the segment by pushing the cameraman onto the floor uh we got ratings for this segment i got half a thumbs up from both of you I guess. I gave it a thumbs up. I'll give my thoughts after you guys, but I'll start with Robert. You got any thoughts on this whole thing that's going on? I mean, to me, it's just interesting because it's like, we don't know what it is. You know what I mean? But let's hear some thoughts from you. Okay. I, I didn't really know what to make of this. Um, <clears throat> I Because I don't know what he means by this is not your company. And I, I was hoping that he would elaborate, but he didn't. But maybe that was the point, you know, to get us thinking what is what's he talking about, and and then he'll explain it at some future episode. I I, I guess that was the whole point. But yeah, I was like, well, I I just don't understand um, where he's going with that statement. Um, so so it, the, his uh his usual uh theme music um wild things didn't play when he, when he entered oh yeah I, um, I, I didn't that, I, I didn't i didn't really recognize it but i think i heard either someone mentioned it or i must have read it somewhere that that's his new japan theme song that's his theme song in new japan mm -hmm. so i don't know if it, i don't know if it's a coincidence that um his new japan theme song is what's being played and then you know, and then he makes that statement that this is not your company. I don't know if there is a some sort of correlation there, maybe. But again, like I, I just have I have no idea. And then I didn't uh, that Bible verse. I didn't even know it was a Bible verse. I was like, what's he talking about? I he, again, he kind of was, mumbled it, but yeah, I had to look okay. it up. Okay, well, I I didn't know it was a Bible verse. And then as for Marina Shafir. All right, I've seen her before summer. I, I just can't remember. <laughs> but I remember, I, I, I recognize the name, and I remember Easy to seeing forget. her at some point. I, oh. I just don't remember exactly. But so 
a lot of this is confusing, but all right, I guess I'll we'll find out more later. <laughs> Well, Marina Shafir was actually an MMA fighter, I guess, right, Vlad? Okay. And she she got a rub from being friends with Ronda Rousey, and so I think she I was think in. She's a... married to Roderick Strong. Is that who's married to Roderick Strong? I'm not sure. I could be wrong. I think that, that's, that too. That too. And she was in NXT. I think she was in a group with. Yeah. I forgot who, but you know, Charlotte Flair or something like that. Maybe was she that was she in that was she in that four horsewoman stable? No, but, she no. may have been with she may have been with Ronda in some group potentially in WWE, maybe. Okay, well that, I'm not sure yeah. about that, but look, they've been trying to give her pushes here and there, and it's just nothing's worked out in AEW so far. But all right, I want to jump to Vlad. Let's hear 90 seconds of thoughts from you on this whole thing. Uh, is this interesting to you at all? It, well, yeah, oh, that's why I give it a half because it's potentially there's a something there that could potentially be interesting, but you know I'm not. I mean, if you followed my reviews of Moxley in general, like, you know, I'm not the biggest John Moxley fan. I really don't like his style. I don't like the way he wrestles. I don't like the way he bleeds in every match. And I don't particularly like most of his promos because he just rambles on how he's going to just murder somebody and he's going to break their bones and things like that. Here he was, at least he didn't talk a lot and he was mysterious, but in, in a sense where you don't really know what's going on, which is fine. Uh, I would have given it like maybe even one thumbs up, but then the backstage segment was so stupid looking. Another one yeah. of those fake bad uh, acting, yeah, bad from acting the, from the like, from the extras. I, I mentioned that. Extra, yes, all, all of them really, everybody involved, it just looked like a terrible like. It just looked so such a phony staged uh, segment that they had backstage that you can't you can't really give like give it two thumbs up or one thumbs up. I was thinking about giving it one, but then this really killed it. And I don't know. I, I've seen a lot. I haven't, I've seen enough of Maria Shafir previously to say that she's not really a great wrestler. So I don't know if she's maybe gotten better in the past, maybe six months or so since we've since I've actually seen her. But for what I've seen before, she, any, anything that involves her is probably not going to be too good. <laughs> but you know what? It's a wait and see approach. Well, she, looks, she looks jacked here, man. And at least she's not talking. Yeah. She's not cutting a promo. So, man. That's always I'd... good. She shouldn't speak. And Moxley <laughs> should speak, but speak less. <laughs> Uh, but like, uh, like, uh, like he did, like he, like he did. I mean, he just said like that one line, like you know, this isn't your company. We're great, mysterious. Don't say anymore, man. In fact, just go. He should, he should have taken the car and gone home. They should have had this backstage segment. It only made things worse. But anyways, that's all I got on that because we really don't know what the hell is going on with this. Yes. Well, I gave it a thumbs up just for the excitement of something new. Although yeah. I have all the same criticisms as you have, the backstage segment was bad. Moxley's mumbling his lines. He's trying to do some dramatic Bible verse, but I couldn't hear him. I had to rewind it and listen very closely. And then, but yeah, in terms of is this like a hostile takeover potentially, that excites me. I've heard a wild yeah. rumor that it could be Shane O'Mac. Sure. But uh, who knows? And Well, yeah. So just in that sense of the excitement of it, I'll give it a thumbs up. I hope something comes of it, but.